Hard kill active protection system. Something a modern tank really needs. Something that makes the tank go from obsolete to modern. Something Russian tanks really, really need. But anyway, Soviets were kind of pioneers in this field. They came up with a bunch of different active protection systems far before it was cool. In today's video, we will take a look at some of the Soviet hard kill active protection systems, some more and some less famous ones. You can play as the Soviet Union in Call of War. Thanks Call of War for sponsoring this video. Call of War is a free online PvP strategy game. Choose a real country to lead during World War II. Fight up to 100 other players in real time in games that can take weeks to complete. Use many units and secret weapons to build your army, such as tanks, planes and even nuclear bombs. Declare war to your neighbors or forge alliances with other players. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles and take over the world. The best thing about it is that it's a long-term PvP strategy game. You can play with the same account on both PC and mobile. You get an exclusive gift. Click on the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is only available for 30 days, don't lose time. Probably the most famous hard kill active protection system from the USSR is the Drozd system. Probably because it was the first serially produced hard kill APS in the world. Now, it was the first serial APS, but it certainly wasn't the first. But we'll get to that later. Drozd entered service in 1982 on T-55AD tanks, as a part of the modernization program which went on par with the T-55AM tanks. The T-55AD also featured many systems of T-55AM, like the laser rangefinder, but lacked the extra armor for obvious reasons. While a hard kill APS sounds great, Drozd had a lot of limitations. The main one being that it only covered the frontal 80 degrees of the vehicle. The vertical coverage is from minus 6 to 20 degrees. This is probably the main reason why it was only installed on the old T-55A tanks, since the more modern tanks did not really require massive boosts to their frontal arc of protection. The system could intercept threats going from 70 to 700 meters per second. This means it was mainly designed to stop rockets and ATGMs in the tank's frontal arc of protection, since the heat shells fired from NATO tanks at the time were much faster. The system could detect an incoming threat from 130 meters. At this distance, the radar works in the detection mode. When it detects a threat, and the threat comes to the 60 meter distance away from the vehicle, the radar switches to the tracking mode and chooses the most suitable launcher to fire. The launcher then fires an explosive charge, by the way, there are 8 launchers in total, 4 on each side, that detonates 6.6 .6 meters away from the vehicle and hopefully neutralizes the threat. Why I say hopefully is because the system did not have a 100% chance of working against the specified threats, more like 75%. That is because it could happen that the fragments of the explosive don't damage critical elements of the threat, in which case the rocket or missile would still retain most of its penetrating power. The system is designed to damage a rocket or missile so that they lose the ability to either detonate or destroy their hollow charge so they lose most of their penetrating power. In some cases, the explosive would just blow them away from the trajectory. But as I said, in some cases, it just doesn't work. The fact that the system covers only the frontal arc of the tank and that it works on such a long distance from the tank means it cannot protect the tank in ambushes and close engagements. But for the time it was designed, it was really good. The entire system weighs only 950 kilograms, it's fully protected against 12.7mm threats, and it improves the frontal protection of all tanks drastically against the most common type of AT threats. In total, 258 T-55 tanks would be upgraded with the Drozd system, which is not a small amount, especially for being the first. But that would not be the end of Drozd. While the T-62D designation exists and the information about it does mention the Drozd upgrade, it was never serially produced. The T-62 tanks were left with the usual up-armoring upgrades. After the collapse of the USSR, both Russia and Ukraine experimented a bit with the system. Ukrainians mounted one Drozd on their new T-84 tank. While it would be a nice addition, it's kinda useless since T-84 had excellent protection at the time. At the time, Omsk Transmash was eager to introduce hard-kill IPS to their T-80U tanks, and T-80U-M1, equipped with famous Arena system, came out of that, as well as T-80U equipped with the Drozd system. 
only a handful, maybe even less, of the TATUs with the draws would be made. And one was even noticed to be in active service fairly recently, and it's gone. Yep, it's gone. It was lost in Ukraine. I kid you not, just as I was writing the script for the video, I saw it got destroyed. The system probably did not even work, it was most likely sent to serve as any other TATU tank. I mean, not like the APS would have helped even if it worked, it only works in the frontal arc on long ranges. Back to the topic though. Remember how I said the draws wasn't the first system to be developed, just the first to enter serial production? Well, Soviets had experimented with hard kill systems since the 50s, and they were coming up with some pretty silly looking things, like this one where the small charges were placed all over the tank. Or this one, if you look closely on this T-64, you will see strange charges protruding from the tank, placed on the hull and the turret. Those had a lot of issues of not working properly since the charges would just explode on the tank and in many cases would not damage the threat enough to stop it. They would often also get triggered by a lot of random things, sometimes wouldn't even work. Basically, they were a mess. But here comes the Dorst. This system came a bit later than Drozd, but unlike Drozd, it works in the short range rather than in the long range. The difference between long range and short range systems is that the long range has to first detect the threat and then decide which launcher is the most suitable one to fire. The short range one, in this case, just needs to detect the threat. That's because it has a radar system mounted together with the launchers in one package. This package is then placed on one side of the vehicle, be it the side or front, and even top. But you can't place multiple systems on one side because the radar works only to detect the threat. Once the threat is detected, the charge immediately detonates. Dodge had two launchers with a radar in the middle. During its operation, it would have one charge out, and the other retracted. Once a charge is spent, the other one would come out. This system could detect threats from just several meters and would work against very fast threats as well. The downside being that it has only two launchers on each side, and that the launchers themselves can actually be damaged much easier than if they were placed in protective tubes like a Drozd. Those who are more versed in the APS technology might find the Dorz to look familiar. That is because the Ukrainian Zaslan system is a direct evolution from Dorz with very minimal changes. Zaslan has sadly not seen any wide use in the Ukrainian army outside of the few prototype vehicles, but it has been heavily exported to Turkey, and they seem to be satisfied with it. If you want to find out more about Zaslan, check out my video on the BM Uplot, where I talk more about it in detail. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russians experimented with more hard kill systems. It includes the famous Arena and Dross 2. After those came Arena M, which is the current candidate for the adoption on the Russian MBTs. Should have maybe done it far sooner, if you know what I mean. And of course, there is Afghanit, currently incorporated in the T-14 and T-15 Armata, which are, mind you, still not in active service. But I will leave this for another video. That would be all. If you like my content, you can support me on Patreon, or just leave a like on the video or sub to the channel if you are new. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day. Call of War is a free online PvP strategy game that takes place during World War II. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. You get an exclusive gift. Click on the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Offer is only available for 30 days. Don't lose time.